Hi everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. In the past few tutorials, we've learned about some pretty powerful masking tools. In fact, using masking with effects and local adjustments is what makes On One Photo Raw shine. So it's very important to understand everything it offers if you really want to get the most out of the software. For this lesson, we'll talk about another great masking tool. The Perfect Brush is really an amazing time saver when you're trying to do complex masking. Using the regular masking brush is limiting because no matter how small you make the brush, it's still difficult to select all the details. The Perfect Brush, on the other hand, samples the color underneath and only selects that color. You can create intricate masks that just wouldn't be possible otherwise. Let's choose an image and take a look. I want to make the pattern in this bag come alive. Doing a basic mask around the whole thing and then using the dynamic contrast filter would do a pretty good job, but not as good as if I were able to select some of the actual pattern and apply the filter only to that. This is where the perfect brush comes into play. So I'm going to use uh, a tone enhancer. Um, I seem to use that in every tutorial, but this is always a good starting point. So I'm just going to actually use this as a guide. I'll be switching out which filter I'm using by copying the mask, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I'm going to go to the mask, the, uh, the masking options, and um, invert the selection. And then um, go to, we have our masking brush selected, and I'm going to hit the X key, and that will change it to Paint In. And up here is where the masking brush is. So you can actually enable it by doing Control or Command R. And uh, so now it's enabled. And there are some options here that we can look at. I'm going to go actually go into these in greater detail um, in a practical demonstration. So uh, there's a color threshold and transition. And we'll be talking about exactly what they are. So in the meantime, we have our perfect brush selected. And I'm going to start making a selection. Now the thing about the perfect brush is there is, uh, when you're painting in, which I'm doing right now, there's a plus sign or a cross in the middle. And when you're painting out, there's a minus sign or a dash in the middle. And the idea is to keep this uh, cross or this dash inside the area that you're selecting. If you uh, select outside, it's going to um, select something that you probably don't want to select. So in this case, I'm selecting the handle and I'm keeping that cross inside and I'm also doing it here. So even though the, the circle itself is going outside of the selection, once the cross is kept in there, then I'm fine. Now I'm probably, I may speed this up for the um, tutorial, but um, in a case like this, uh, you know, there's all kinds of tones in here and different colors actually inside this selection. So it, it is really, depending on where that cross and that uh, minus or dash is, is uh, what it's over, that's what it's sampling. And so you'll see that it's really not grabbing all of where that uh, circle is going over. It's just doing what it's seeing as the, the underlying color. Now, if I was using the regular masking brush, it would be just basically doing a big blob of selection here. Even though I said that uh, keeping the cross or the dash inside the area you want to select, there is an exception. If you hold down the control key while you're se selecting, it will just remember this underlying color. So you may go outside that and it's not actually going to select anything. This kind of, of selection is actually going to take quite a long time, uh, but it actually is worth it for me. So uh, I'm going to take a look at where we are with the mask right now. So you can see just an amazing job that this is doing of selecting that intricate pattern. And I can kind of go around this area here, knowing roughly where it is. Right here. And let me go back to the picture and see where that handle is. Okay, right there. Now, you can see I went over that, so I'm going to just Control Z. You really do need to see the picture of what you're doing. 
So again, I'm going to hold down the control key and make sure that I don't select any of the background color. Okay, let's see what that selection looks like. Okay, maybe just a little bit more here. I'll make it smaller. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually not going to use this uh, tone enhancer. I just did it as a as a guide, basically, so I can kind of see it. So I will copy the mask. So this is one of the beauties of the way that masking is set up in on one. I don't have to do this again for another filter. I can just copy the one that I've selected already. So I'm going to copy it, and now I can just get rid of this filter completely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a dynamic contrast filter, and I'm going to crank up the detail and exaggerate it a little bit just for this tutorial. Now, that's way too much for everything, and so I'm going to pull down the masking options again and invert it so that the mask is turned black and it is not visible, the effect is not visible. So what I can do here is um, I can now go over and paste in that mask that I created already. And now you can see that um, it's on the uh, dynamic contrast is only on the, the pattern, actually, most of the pattern of the bag. And uh, we'll look at the, at the uh, mask here. That's all it's, it's affecting right now. And I think that that is a lot more effective than um, just doing a big kind of a clear wash of, of selection on a mask and then just applying the dynamic contrast. It really does enhance the, the pattern that's on that particular uh, bag. Now let's take a look at the uh, options that are with the uh, perfect brush. Uh, the color threshold slide controls how much or how little of an underlying color is selected. The lower the number, the smaller the detail will be selected. The larger number will select a broader range all at once. So let me see if I can demonstrate that. So we'll go to the mask view itself. So if right now what it's doing is it's selecting all of these little intricate details. If I change the color threshold to 100, and if I start selecting, you can see that it's just it's doing a much broader kind of a selection. It's looking at um, colors that are close to each other and doing those as a as a single selection instead of just doing one color at a time. So I generally wouldn't be doing that. I, to be honest, I don't see the point in doing that kind of selection with this tool. And then the transition is basically, it controls the softness of the selection. And the smaller the number, the harder the edge, or the more intricate the, the detail being selected. The higher the number, the softer the selection. So it's good for large surfaces, but you definitely lose accuracy. So in a case like this, um, if I go to 100 and I start selecting, again, you can just see that it's really soft. So it, really to, to uh, maximize this particular tool, you want to just keep everything fairly low in the number range. And I'll undo that. Okay. So here's a view here again. And if I take the uh, mask off or the, the effect off and then put it back on again, you can see just how, how um, really cool that selection is. So one thing to keep in mind with the Perfect Brush is it uses a lot of resources because there's a lot of mathematical calculations going on. Once you've selected the tricky areas, it's a good idea to turn it off and use a regular brush to select larger areas. Before I go, I want to share a quick tip with you. Um, so if, if I uh, make this view a little smaller, you can see this background color. This, uh, this suits me for most situations. Um, sometimes if I'm working on a black and white image, say, and there's a lot of dark grays in it, this background will conflict with that, and uh, I'm not really getting a good sense of the composition. So what I can do is uh, I can change the color of that, and uh, I do that by going up to Edit, and then Preferences, and then this area here is Preview Background Color. And I can choose any color I want to. So say I wanted a light gray, and I just say OK, and then that changes to light gray. And you can go back to uh, another color. You can do black, you can do white, whatever you want. You can create a custom color if you'd like. So there's all kinds of options. I'm going to do a dark gray right now. Also, you can choose the accent color. Um, right now, you, if you're over here, you, you can see that uh, it's orange, and you can change it to all these different colors. 
when you change it, you do have to quit and restart, so I'm not going to do it this time. So there's definitely some options for uh, the interface colors uh, that will help you when you're editing various types of images. So that's it. If you enjoy this video, please like it on YouTube. And if you like what I'm doing, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.